Today I'm going to be talking about PlayStation's DualSense Edge controller. Let's get into it. So I got this controller at Christmas and I have been absolutely loving using it. From swinging in Spider-Man to building in Fortnite, it's been absolutely fantastic. And the design of this controller looks awesome. But I'll get back to the controller's design later on in the video. So I'm sure a lot of you are curious to know the price of this controller and whether it's a good deal compared to the competition. Now, if you want to buy one of these controllers, it will set you back £209.99 pence which is a lot for a controller, but is the price that worth it? But if we compare it to the competition Scuf, this is actually around the same price, with the Scuf controller coming in at £219.99 for a similar spec controller. Now, what I mean by similar spec is, is if we look on Scuf's website, they have three different versions of the controller with different features. Now, for the starting price of £199, you see that you get the adjustable triggers, so you still get the feel of the triggers, so they go all the way down and they have adaptiveness and, you know, they can be hard, soft, whatever. They can be basically anything that you want them to be. Has immersive, you know, vibrations. It weighs around 300 grams and, you know, it's sort of built for action and sport games. Now, if we step this price up to then the Scuf Reflex Pro, we then start at £219.99 with the adaptive triggers to simulate real feel in-game interactions and you still have the vibration experience, so basically all the vibrations you get with the normal controller, but you get the added non-slip, extra comfort and durability on the controller, and you also get the same weight of 300 grams. Now this one is built for shooter, action games, sport and adventure, the same as the regular one. If we step it up to £249.99, we get instant bumper trigger support. So as soon as I flick this all the way down, we get instant clicks. So it's completely instant, like a mouse click, and it's honestly fantastic. I absolutely love the scuff click, and honestly, it sounds so satisfying. Now, obviously, across all of these, you get paddles on the back, which you can use, so that is obviously great. As we can see there, it's actually quite a bit of a difference with the controllers and the specs and their pricing. So it suddenly does make Sony's controllers seem a lot more appealing. But stay till the end of the video to see if that is the case. Now, the dome buttons on the back of this controller are absolutely fantastic and feel more intuitive than the back paddles. Now, the reason for this is because when you are using the controller, your natural position is actually, you know, basically how I'm holding it now. So the domes are actually perfect. Now, you know, they're in a better position than they are for the paddles. So paddles on this controller did not feel natural. Now, the paddles are fantastic on the Xbox Elite controller because of its size, but I'll get back to that later. Now, the domes of the PlayStation controller are a unique feature in the industry because I've never ever seen anything like it. And I was skeptical at first because I thought I'd prefer the paddles. But when you get used to it and what you've been using, you know, the, the domes really start to feel amazing. But you have to try the two together to see how much more intuitive the domes are. Honestly, it's night and day difference. And you definitely notice that, you know, the domes work a lot better. Now, in terms of responsiveness, the buttons are instant and making it makes the game experience 10 times better. So, for example, when I was playing Spider-Man, you know, the button combination of triangle and circle is a really weird combination of buttons. It doesn't feel natural. And, you know, when you're in an intense fight, the back buttons make the game experience 10 times better. Now, you may be asking if you can swap profiles on the controller. And yes, there are four profiles that you can customize to hotkeys. The controller has two function buttons along the bottom. Now, when you hold these down, it changes the function of triangle, square, circle, and X button to be mapped to four different custom profiles. It also remaps the D-pad to adjust the volume of your headset and also adjust the balance between pause chat and game chat. I love the joystick tips that come with the controller. They are absolutely fantastic and come with different heights in the box. My personal setup is to have the right stick up higher for better aiming and my left stick is lower for more agile moving. I would also like to mention that the joysticks are super easy to swap out. It takes around 30 seconds to get the joystick out and replace. Now, you may be asking, how much do the replacement joysticks cost? Now, they cost £19.99, which is an absolute bargain. It makes it easier to fix stick drift. You know, honestly, stick drift is a massive issue on controllers like this. So it is honestly fantastic to see that you can replace them so easily. The controller also comes with a nice quality USB-C braided cable, which you could also lock into place with the included USB-C lock. Now, because you lose a lot of that delay that you get if you use the controller wirelessly. Now, I'd also like to touch on the case that comes included with the controller. I think that it's a very sturdy case and will protect your controller if you're traveling or going to an eSport convention. The only downside to it is that you can you have to charge the controller with a USB-C cable directly to the controller, which compared to the Xbox case, which includes the wireless charging dock, is a massive downside. It means you can't just dock your controller and leave it. You have to 
get the controller in the case, then you have to wire the cable through the box. It's a lot easier on the Xbox's version. Finally, I would like to talk about the triggers. I think they are absolutely amazing on the regular controller with the amazing force feedback and the immersive feel into the game. But there is just one feature that adds this amazing experience, which is the switches on the back, which can make the triggers adjust more responsively and act like a mouse click when you click them, which makes playing competitively a lot better and a lot more immersive. Now, comparing the adjustable triggers from the PlayStation branded one to the Scuf branded one, there is one massive difference. The most high tier version of the controller has the best triggers, which are like the mouse clicks. They have no delay between pushing the trigger down and at and responding on your game. Where as compared to the PlayStation branded one there, it's a slight dip before you actually hit the trigger button. Now what I mean by this is if I show you closely, I'll also try and show it over the top if I can't do it here perfectly, is that when you click, yes, there is less of a travel than compared to on the normal version. Obviously this is way better than this when you're shooting in a game. But on the scuff version of the controller, you get that instant, I mean, when you push it down, it clicks straight away. There is no delay, there is no waiting. It's honestly amazing. But to conclude, would I say that this controller is worth buying over its competitors? And is it even in the same class as the Xbox Elite controller? As I said at the beginning of the video, the controller's design is absolutely fantastic and looks lovely and takes a different approach to the regular PlayStation controllers. The black buttons and the rounded corners add a nice look of elegancy and ergonomics when it's in the hand, which makes the controller feel a lot more comfortable when holding for prolonged periods of time. But to start, the Xbox Elite controller is £50 cheaper, with the Xbox controller coming in at £159.99. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the Xbox controller used the classic panel buttons instead of the domes, which does work with the Xbox controller because it's slightly smaller in the hand than the PlayStation controller, which means that you can reach the buttons a lot easier. The Elite controller also has the same set of features as the PlayStation controller, other than those force feedback triggers, which obviously at the moment isn't even on the regular Xbox controllers. But does this mean that the DualSense Edge controller is a bad deal compared to the Xbox's counterpart? No, I don't think so. I think PlayStation are just trying to aim for the pro gamers and the ones that take their games seriously, whereas Xbox are trying to appeal to a, a wider audience that want more from their controllers, whilst keeping it relatively the same and affordable. I would also just like to touch on the battery life on the DualSense Edge controller. It has been worse than I expected with, you know, with using the force feedback triggers all the time intensively on Spider-Man. I was averaging around four to six hours of battery life, which isn't great when you compare it to the Xbox Elite controller, which can normally do just above a day. But would I say to spend your hard earned money on the PlayStation official controller instead of the SCUF controller? I would absolutely, for the price, you are getting a good deal because the controller's integration with the PlayStation software is just something you're not gonna get from a third-party manufacturer like Scuff. You're, you also don't get amazing quality control with third-party brands. With most third-party controllers going wrong within the first six months, compared to Xbox and Sony's quality control, it is night and day. So would I say go right ahead and buy the DualSense controller? Yes, you absolutely won't regret it if you are serious about gaming. But if you did enjoy this video, please do like and subscribe. If you have a DualSense Edge controller, please make sure to comment down below. It's been Harry. I'm out. Peace.